I'm relentless right now. Just put relentless right here on my forehead. I'm on them green. I'm on the green journey, the greenback journey. Let's go. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. LFD pulling up in the big red wagon, and we are going bass fishing, y'all. I'm back. I know. I'm back from Mexico. Had some terrible winds down there that didn't allow me to fish um, for my own channel. Filmed some amazing videos on some other channels. The weather was crazy, y'all. It was either like dead calm or super windy. Ended up doing some really awesome stuff in town, though. Most amazing street food I've ever had. Tacos. Wow. Anyways, be on the lookout for that. And that was a great kickoff for me. I needed that so bad, y'all, because I had been fishing for the last, I don't know, couple weeks and just struggling. And then go down there, stroke on some baggins. Ooh. And honestly, it was it was still pretty tough. Like had to had to really slow down to get the bites. However, geared me up for the bite that's probably going on right now across the state and the region and that's having to fish slow for big bites with fish moving up in the area getting ready to spawn but not really eating so we got pre-spawn and we got spawn and since it has been in the 50s at night key 55 degrees 55 degree water if it's if it's at that overnight fish really start to move up get your little thermometers out because it is kicking i'm starting to look back in my notes these next few weeks it's going to be popping so me and pops are going to hit a local lake where the water is i'm going to guess it's going to be 55 or over it could be 58 we're going to go up in the shallows and try to get up in the 60. it is extremely windy i think the mexico winds followed me here we're going to try to get protected and fish shallow for some bass i just got in the mood because i was catching them you know anywhere 8 to 12 even up into 3 in mexico and some of them had big old mouths and i sniffed them good talk to me you got a jig on this is the dangle like father and son oh that looks dad dad that looks like sexual chocolate. That yeah, looks pretty nice right there. Half ounce. I see you've been doing some rigging at home. Bandito bug attached. Yes. Dagger. Let's put you on the pro staff. Yeah, and I've got. It. And you got red. You got red crankbaits tied on. And there's also a little brown color that we know about that does pretty well this time of year. And there it is. That's that's my favorite. There it is, Dad. That I, I want to say that color, honestly. From, for our Guggen Squad colors is dedicated to you. No kidding. Because that wouldn't have been a color if it wasn't for you. Because well. uh, you and I have caught some really big fish on those colors. You know, honestly, it's not our best selling color. It, it, it's not the most visually appealing to the fisherman's eye, but man, in the early spring, crawfish get a little just faded brown in that little orange belly. Woo! Sneaky good color for Bondo bass early in the year. I've caught some big, big bass with it over the years, so this is all I'm bringing. Okay. I'm ready, I'm ready to go. Dedicated. Shallow water fishing, that's what we're doing. It's been a while since you and I have, have fished. I know you got the hunger, you got the itch. Let me show you guys one more thing that my daddy taught me a long time ago. So if you want to be one with the elements, you got to study nature, you got to study the elements around you. Let me show you this. Let me show you my little peach tree right here. Y'all see? Y'all see what's starting to bloom on the tips here? Little pink flowerings. I've actually had some white tail coming up trying to eat these things uh, here at night, but this is a sign. That's when the fish start to move into the shallows. Now that is a peach tree, and here is a dogwood, and we, there's dogwoods everywhere. You know when they are blooming, they're just big, white, uh, beautiful blooms that come out, and it's just starting to bud right now. So if I'm just using nature, if I'm just using nature, this is telling me that they're not going to be up on the beds, but they're going to start moving into the chalos. Those things are going to pop off white here in about another week. Dad's throwing his rods in the boat. It is time to play a game, ladies and gentlemen, of did my rods get broken on the airline? All right, it's time to whip them on out. Tips are good. These tips look good, y'all. We're ready to dangle. I was just asked, are, are you sure you want to fish? 
Can y'all hear the wind? Look at that thing. It is, a, is there a flag here somewhere? It is sustained 20, gusting to 25, maybe 30. Let's do it. I do it for the Bondos. That's why, if you're asking, why do I grind myself? Why don't I just go somewhere where I know the bass are biting, some other state? Partly because I'm going to the Bassmaster Classic to meet a lot of you guys this weekend. So follow me on the socials, at Lake Fort Guy, if you want to stay tuned. Voracious winds. We have 57.6 degrees right now. I was off by a little bit. It is pretty darn close. The bass seem to be sitting in like 10 to 12 right here. They're not on the full commitment. Remember that one time we went all the way up there on Choke Canyon, got in the back and then boom. We are as far back as we can go here. We've gone about another 150 yards or so. Why don't you just look at that water temperature? 61.1 we started it was 56 just from going in the back of this creek now it's muddy but that'll just tell you that these fish will look for that water temperature in the backs of the creeks and then the northern pockets mostly first just hang with me fishing freaks may not catch them today but i'm on the hunt now after being on the spawn, pre-spawn in Mexico, having a taste, and it's just getting that time of year. I'm, I'm just, I'm like a, uh, a German short hair on a quail right now for these fish. So, is that right? Does that sound about right, hunting species? Anyway, let me know in the comments if I'm wrong. So the point is, I am trying, I've been trying to get on these fish in uh, brutal conditions, really. Um, but trust me, the magic is going to happen on this channel very soon, because I'm, I'm relentless right now. Just put relentless right here on my forehead. I'm on them green. I'm on the green journey, the greenback journey. Let's go. LFD lost him. No. Dang it, Dad. Son of a biscuit. Man, about to go in and Pops hooks up. Couldn't get it done, y'all. LFD had one there at the end. We got to go. It's family night. We're going to continue this video. Don't worry. Had a little taste right there. You had a fish on. Yep. Let's just, I hope the camera picked it up. But what, what do you think it weighed, Dad? I'm thinking four and a half or five. Four and a half or five? Yep. I think I think your progressive lenses are adding a serious belly to that fish. Well, I mean, I'm thinking two and a half, maybe three to be maximum generosity. Come on now. Come oh on. yes, sir. Come on. This is at least four pounds. Yeah, I kind of just, I, you know what? Look, just give it to him. Just, just give it to him. Even though he didn't land it. That's Just true. give it to him. You had a five. <laughs> it was four and a half or five. I love you, Dad. But All right, what? I want no five back there. Hear that? Ducks are flying. Good morning to the quackers and the cluckers. We're going to switch gears right now, y'all. So we fished just local lake yesterday, me and my dad, before we had to do a little family dinner, get that family time in. But now I'm gonna go fish a lake that I just fished recently on one of my latest videos. And I got like basically a session in about like yesterday, a couple of hours, but I'd never been there before, knew nothing about the lake. And we're gonna have an overcast day. I think these fish are gonna be more amped up to bite today. Uh, with these overcast conditions, but I'm telling you guys, I'm just amped. This lake is so much different than the one we were at yesterday. 
First fish on, baby. First cast with the jerk bait. Could this be? Could this be? Could this be the deal? Ladies and gentlemen, fish landed. There we go. I mean, first cast with it. Wow. I have thrown lipless cranks and vibrating jigs and Ned rigs and Carolina rigs <laughs> and shaky heads and all sorts of stuff. That is what just got it done at jerk bait. Nice little two pound male bass right there. Came on the old Scout, Coogan Squad Scout, full size, not the junior, size four to six feet. That beautiful, delicious color with a little chartreuse line right there. And I mean the first cast in the same area. Second fish on. Another male bass. Same scenario. I'll show you guys something here in just a second. Get this fish in. Oh, he got it on the long pause. About the same length, but definitely fatter. That fish is chunky monkey. Okay, see you, buddy. Fish really snuck up on me. You guys see this? Um, you know, if you're if you're learning how to read electronics, this is a tip for you. You see this little faint blue line right here? Let me just hit the trolling motor and move on out. I want to show you. That little faint line right there is just little little bits of grass. And a hard bottom is gonna look just way more crisp. And so when you see like this soft and it's it's this little bit of, of reading, and red is like a uh, heavy signature, goes all the way down to blue. Blue is like, it's very light. So, um, you know, I've got it on split imaging right here, but this just regular 2d if you're seeing this the last two fish i've had it's it's been in this type of grass it's fresh growing grass it's new they don't seem to want to eat the lipless crankbait through there i don't know if whether it's to do with like just pressure or i don't know it's just still a little cold for them normally they hit the lipless uh in that exact situation but this is a different way to catch them. I really like this technique in the fall when the grass is thicker, but uh, right now, as you can see, it's falling off. You don't see that blue line anymore. It just kind of scatters out. But I've seen this on a lot of different types of lakes when there's that new grass growth that's coming in. You're starting to catch it on your treble hooks. You can identify this on the bank too, if you're just throwing a lipless crankbait and then maybe switch up to a jerk bait or what I may go to here in a second is just a wacky rigged lunker log, you know, your stick baits, stuff like that, going real slow. I'm gonna keep twitching, see if I can get a few more, but definitely developing a pattern here. It's just gotta go slow and, and be patient. Third fish on, ladies and gentlemen, and guess what? The wacky rig just came into play. Little guy, don't throw my lunker log. Per perfectly hooked the side of the mouth. That was my second cast with it. The first cast I reeled in some grass that just looked phenomenal. It was a different species than what I've seen. So decided to just kind of dangle this in there a little more. Fish number four, slammed it. Another male bass on the dirt pit. There we go. Absolutely hammered that thing. Same technique though. Have to go very, very slow. I'm gonna leave a link down below for this particular bait. This is the Scout uh, in the full size, but we also have a Junior. Uh, I would recommend the junior if you're fishing like less than five feet of water or basically you want your bait to ride up less than five feet of water. 
and this one goes goes down to six you know four to six just depending on your line and everything like that the fish on the jerk bait but it's not it's not the one that's a little dude there look how fat my gosh just fat 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 that is not the big girl very pretty though good genetics on that fish super thick tail we'll let him go he'll get bigger the jerk bait continuing to be key go with long periods between getting bites you know and i keep cutting the gopro off it's running out of battery and then i get a bite Got it back on. I'm not fishing super shallow water, so I could, I'm still setting myself up to get a really big one. Oh, there's one. Gosh, another male though. I mean, it, I just jerked in it and stopped. Ski this guy in. There's another one right there. Small fish too, about 10 feet of water, but they're able to come up and grab this thing. This guy, not fat at all. See ya, Butkus, go get bigger. I've got it on just the perfect rig. There's no big structures out here for fish to take me into. Just put it on that 10 pound braid. Got the drag loosened up. Let her fight. Grab her by the face, give her a big hug, kiss and a sniff. Let her go what I want. Oh my. Oh my. Oh my. Oh, wow. Ladies and gentlemen, the herd has been located. There's nowhere I can't go. There is nowhere I can't go and get them. I was just coming up on a little hump there and I noticed a, uh, well, a lot of fish. I would dare say y'all that there is a bass to be found in here that could get a little scary. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and reel this fish in. There's just a large feeding that's happening very large oh my oh my we've got them we've got them where's my pliers this might be how i end it just because this is incredibly fun there's so many fish down here i could end up finding a crappie or two in here or a big old bass golly that fish ate that spoon like it never even seen one that's awesome. So I'm just gonna drop this thing back down, do a little vertical dance again. Watch this. This is, they're just ready to eat. Didn't even hit the bottom. Wow, that's, that's a full grown tugger there too. Oh, he's coming up. This is gonna be a what? Oh, a jumping white bass, almost. We almost had our first jumping white bass, folks. I had no idea these fish were in here. I think I found all of them. I think they're all here. 21 foot deep, glorious looking hump. I'm just gonna let it sit there until one just grabs it. There he is. Wow, it's incredible. Y'all, I could, I could probably catch like 20 or 30 uh, pretty easily right here i'm not even kidding y'all this is this is amazing gosh on oh, the juice i needed this i needed this y'all but where where's the hog jammer at i'm gonna sit here for a minute and see if these fish clear out see if any uh big ones show up if you know what i'm saying gosh okay here we go this is a big fish this could be a large meat large mouth yep we got a largey it's coming up to jump too here we go 
I'm gonna loosen the drag because this could be a mega giant. Please don't get off. This is how I catch the big one, y'all. Out here going after the white bass. Oh yeah, it's a big fish. This is a big one. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Don't jump. Don't jump. Don't let that hook come out. Oh my God, it is a giant. Wow. On a little bitty spoon. Y'all aren't even gonna believe this. This is crazy. Oh my gosh, yeah. It's like six, maybe a little bit bigger. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. This is why I do this, this time of year. I do it for crappie. Every, everything kind of gangs up in spots sometimes. And that spoon is just boop, right at the tip of its nose. <sighs> These big largies, man. This might be bigger than six. These big largies will eat white bass. I can promise you. Barely hooked. Barely hooked. Okay. One more little round. Got you right in the chin. Okay, come here, baby. Don't jump. Gotcha. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a hog jammer. Dang, you gotta love it. God, you gotta love it. God, y'all, I just got back from Mexico. I don't even think I caught a fish this big. Coming back to my home state and getting on them fish that I love to catch, white bass, and I catch an absolute donkey. Wow. Look at that, y'all. That's a hog jammer. I'm gonna put it in the live well because I really wore it out. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna revive it and then let it go. <sighs> okay, y'all, I'm gonna get a, just a really quick wait and let this fish go because I brought it out of deep water and it is kind of floating sideways, so I don't want to make sure I get it back as quick as I can. I'm just kind of curious what this fish is. A huge fish. Literally out there chasing white bass. Oh, it's in kilograms. Okay. I'm not even going to mess around with it, y'all, but that's a toad. I mean, it's at least a six pound bass. Come on, girl. Get in, I love you so much. <laughs> that just summed it up for me right there. And the big fish are not up there. I had that suspicion as I was throwing around the bank with the jerk bait and was getting the males. I thought about slowing down around the banks with a, a plastic bait or something like that. But as soon as I came over that hump and I saw all those white bass, I was like, ah, I'm gonna drop down. Maybe I'll catch some crappie or white bass. And, notoriously big bass uh, hang around them as well. That just proved it to me. Uh, they are not moving up just yet in this area. Told you guys, just hang with me. We are gonna catch some big bass this year. I have had lots of ups and downs so far this season. Uh, struggling to get on a bite, I think that is too, too far behind. Uh, and I'm just, I'm thinking, I do this every year. But anyway, just hang with me guys. Hit the subscribe button. I'm gonna end it right here. Uh, and I may actually put the boat on the trailer, go fish another lake that's close to here. Uh, might get back on the white bass. I don't know, but I think we've learned our lesson for the day. So thank you for tuning in. You gotta smash that like button for catching the Mondos and also just, um, just going with your instincts. Stay tuned for all the upcoming action, guys. And don't forget, I will be at the Bassmaster Classic this weekend uh, at the Mystery Tackle Box booth if you wanna come see me. I love you, God bless you. And I'll see you soon.